Thanks, Neil. Uh, next up will be Zenny Abraham. Zenny, you can unmute and ask your question. Yeah, thank you, Randall. Uh, Gene, how are you doing? Uh, I am curious to know what you think about the helmet rule, the crown helmet hit rule, because on a couple of games, at least last season, uh, one with respect to the Browns, where it looked like it should have been called, but wasn't, and then, of course, it was a reverse the previous week. Do you think the committee should now re-review that uh, with respect to uh, attempted tackles that are below the waist? Yeah, Zenny, it, it's a great question. And, and look, at I, I, I should say this first about illegal use of helmet and defenseless receiver penalties. Um, this is a very aggressive game. We all know that. Uh, the speed at which these plays are taking place um, on the field and that proximity is truly, literally a blink of an eye. Um, with that said, the safety mechanism and the reason and rationale for implementing these new rules is a necessity, right? Um, because of the long-term potential effect of what could happen as a result of that foul. Not just the player getting hit, truly more times than not, the player delivering illegal use of the helmet because of his positioning with his head and what could compromise himself and uh, with his health because of that. But to officiate that play consistently in real time is, is a very, very tall task. And to be honest with you, what is really difficult about the play as we have seen even in the postseason, and I know that we see it week in and week out, uh, a lot of times the defensive player is lowering his target area to make the play legal. They are trying to turn their shoulder so that they're not leaving with the helmet. And in this race kind of of both players trying to get lower than their opponent, helmets and heads are meeting in a really, really severe way, which by rule are technically fouls and, and need to be implemented. Um, I'm not a proponent of replay growing so many more tentacles that it slows down the movement of the game and the entertainment value of the game. I am, though, a total proponent of when new rules are implemented in the, in, 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 in the NFL specifically for this conversation, but anytime you implement a new rule, Part of the implementation of that rule needs to be to talk to the officiating department as part of that rule developing body and say, this is the direction we want to take the game as the stakeholders. Can you officiate this play in real time at a level of consistency that we can, that we can implement this and not have it be something that's not called correctly over the course of a game, a season, and, and so on? Um, these two plays, and I would say a legal use of the helmet more so even than defenseless receiver. Mm -hmm. I never worked the legal use of the helmet on the field because it's been implemented in the last three years. Uh, but that play, to me, does not feel like a play that could be officiated in the upper 90 percentile of consistency, mm -hmm. right? right? So if that's a rule that we know we all agree we want in the game because of the protection of players, then how do we get to that level of consistency or, or correctness, right? Okay. And in these two cases, uh, I feel like that is a play that should be reviewable because it changes so fast. And once you're on that field and you've experienced, look, how quick pass fumbles occur, how quick everything on that field really is, um, you want to be consistent. That's the goal of officials always, right? Yeah. Is they want to make sure if it's a foul, we want to make sure we get it. But if it isn't a foul, we also make, make sure that we don't want to call that. When you have one quick snapshot frame of a play of that magnitude, it is very difficult to digest that and be in the 90 percentile in efficiency. Therefore, how do we keep that in the game? It's right for the game, mm -hmm. but get it right. Mm -hmm. To me, it would be creating some way to review this mm -hmm. and allowing once the review process started, if they did, that there may be that window where you look and say, is this a football play, mm -hmm. right? right? Or is an unnecessary roughness play that deserves to be penalized? That discussion, I think, is the, is the next step if they review those and how they implement that rule. But uh, I'm, for, I'm for the penalties as the way they're written. Mm -hmm. I think the application of them, I would like to see it become a reviewable play so we can lift the level of efficiency and consistency in it.
Michael, quick, what about tech solution where you have touches on the shoulders and you can score, if you will, to see, you know, if the hit was really where it should be? I'm sorry, I lost the beginning of your question. I'm sorry, Zen. A tech solution where you'd have on the uniforms places where if, if they hit with a shoulder or register elsewhere by, via Wi-Fi. Um, tr I'm trying not to go into detail out of respect for time, you know. Right, right. I, yeah, you know, it, it's it, it. It would be great if it could work that way, but it, it might be a shoulder that hits that area, right, where mm -hmm. the helmet hits a different area, mm -hmm. or additional technology might give you a false sense that something occurred that may not have. <laughs> True. Um, yeah. But once you review these plays, and and we all know from the amazing camera angles we all get with with television and what with our camera people do, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, I believe that you know, in an efficient period of time. Uh, window of stoppages there in that scenario, you can you can raise the level of consistency. And look at, if it were a reviewable play, think that it may also become somewhat of a deterrent for a player to prevent or pre present that technique knowing that it's reviewable, right? right? So maybe the collectiveness of that lowers the amount of decisions that are needed to be made that way. And over the evolution of time, uh, I think you'll see that happen. Look, college football, we all know in college football, if that occurs, they're ejecting players for the entire game and mm -hmm. sometimes for the end of the first this game and first half of the next. So this next generation of players, they have been playing that way since they left high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, I think, also will start to become something that will trend more to we see less of it mm -hmm. because their technique is being taught at a very young level on how to avoid those scenarios. So I think we're still in that process mm -hmm. of, of people that maybe weren't, weren't playing that way when their career started, but now we're being asked to play that way now. Mm -hmm. But I think soon that will become less of an issue maybe, and it'll lower the, the, the amount of those that we see. Yeah. Thank you, Gene. And thank you, Randall. Thanks, Annie. Uh, next up will be Roger Goodgroves. Uh, Roger, you can unmute and ask your question.